New flooding and the aggravation of ongoing flooding is likely later today, and the potential for severe storms, some of which could be quite nasty. Let's talk about it in this Friday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Good morning. It is Friday, the 2nd of June, 2023. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. It is going to be a busy weather day across portions of the western third of Texas, while those of you in the eastern half of Texas are going to be asking, what the heck am I talking about? Yeah, we've flipped roles. Usually we're talking about the eastern half of Texas being busy with weather, while the western half of Texas bakes, cooks, and deals with drought. Not this time. We are going to be pretty busy later today, it looks like, and we are going to be starting off probably by lunchtime, so an earlier start than we typically might see during the late season severe weather threat scale, whatever. I don't know. It's Friday. I'm not making up any more fancy words. Let's just go ahead and start off with the threat of flooding. Now, this is going to be the forecast rain totals over the next two days, so 7 a.m. this morning through 7 a.m. Sunday. This is an average. Some folks are going to get more. Some folks are going to get less. On average, we're expecting an additional one to two inches of rain across the Panhandle, West Texas, Big Country, Concho Valley, and Northwest Texas, lighter amounts down into the Edwards Plateau and further east into Texoma. Caveat here being that portions of West Texas and the Panhandle could see localized rainfall amounts of four to six inches, at least, today. And given the antecedent soil conditions, everything is saturated, the ground simply can't take much more or any more water in spots. Any rain that falls today is going to simply run off and cause flooding to either develop very quickly or exacerbate ongoing flooding and make it much worse more quickly. So a pretty substantial threat for flooding today. Uh, road closures, rapid rises on creeks and streams, uh, more low-lying flooding across portions of the Panhandle, West Texas, into the big country. We saw that yesterday when some areas around Post got seven inches of rain in the matter of about five hours. Same thing could happen today in a few communities, so be mindful of that, and that's why we're talking about the flooding threat first. Now, onward to the second severe, or the second hazard in our multifaceted Weather world of fun here in early June. Severe storms. We're going to have a pretty nasty severe weather threat today as well. We've got a level 3 out of 5 risk for severe storms in orange. That's going to be about a 1 in 3 chance of a rowdy severe storm within 25 miles of any given point, such as your home or business. Uh, this now includes all of the Permian Basin, portions of the Concho Valley, the western big country, into west Texas, Plainview, Lubbock, Midland, Odessa, San Angelo, down to Junction. The potential for not only severe storms, but significant severe storms. We're going to be dealing with a bimodal severe weather threat here in storm mode, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Level 2 risk in yellow, that's about a 1 in 5 to a 1 in 6 chance for a few severe storms today into tonight. That includes portions of the eastern Big Bend and northern Edwards Plateau. The remainder of the big country, a little bit of northwest Texas right off the Cap Rock, and the Texas Panhandle, including Dumas, Amarillo, Childress, Abilene, down to Del Rio, and Fort Stockton. And finally, that level one risk in green, that's the outlying risk. That's about a 1 in 10 to a 1 in 20 chance of a severe storm. That includes places like Wichita Falls, down towards Breckenridge, down towards Eagle Pass, and on the western side, Pecos northern side, uh, Dalhart, Canadian, up in the panhandle. Now, let's talk about the severe weather threats today. We're going to be dealing with two different storm modes. Initially, supercellular storm mode across West Texas, the panhandle. Those storms could, by, could honestly be underway by 11 a.m. So again, an early start, but they could also grow upscale quickly into a cluster or a squall line. When these storms are in their discrete or semi-discrete storm mode phase, supercellular storm mode is likely. We could see hail, baseball to softball size in the most intense storms, localized winds of 60 to 70 miles an hour, the potential for a few tornadoes. Transitioning into the linear mode or the squall line or cluster of thunderstorms mode. When that occurs, the threat of that baseball to softball size hail is going to decrease. We're still going to have a hail threat, 
but the threat for damaging hurricane force straight line winds will increase. We could have winds 75 to 85 miles an hour in sections of the squall line where we have bowing segments occur. In addition, we're going to have to still watch for spin-up tornadoes and any sort of little comma features on the lean edge of the squall line or occasionally a uh, comma head feature back on the northern side of the squall line where we can see circulation spin up. I know, I'm being nerdy, don't hate me. Uh, it's just to say we're going to be busy. Further south across portions of the Permian Basin, Concho Valley, into the western Edwards Plateau, same story. We're likely going to see isolated scattered supercell thunderstorms fire up by late morning, early this afternoon. Storms will move off to the east. However, storms may also maintain more of a semi-discrete supercellular storm mode through the afternoon into the early evening. Same threats as I stated for the initial discrete storms further north. Potential for damaging hail to giant hail, baseball to softball size, localized winds 60 to 75 miles an hour, the potential for a few tornadoes. The highest threat for tornadoes today will be near any outflow boundaries left over from storms on Thursday. That will allow for enhanced low-level spin or the low-level wind shear. In addition, we're going to likely see a very substantial amount of low-level instability in proximity of any sort of outflow boundary, and that helps stretch out the lower levels of the atmosphere helps increase the probability of what we call vorticity, and that increases the potential for a few tornadoes. Same story as storms further north. If and when new storms further south end up conjoined into a cluster or line, the primary threat will transition over to damaging straight line winds, flooding rainfall, pocket change size hail up to the size of golf balls perhaps, and perhaps spin up tornadoes. Unlike storms back in May, you can see we're not really going to see a big progression off to the east to I-35 with this activity tonight, at least in the severe weather department. That being said, these storms, again, are going to initially fire up in portions of the Big Bend, the Trans-Pecos, the Guadalupe Mountains, eastern New Mexico, and then boogie on east through the day into the evening hours. Now, let's take a look at the high-res rapid refresh model. And again, you can see we're expecting this to get going pretty early, 11 to 12, 11 a.m. to noon central time across eastern New Mexico down into the Trans-Pecos. Storms will move east 15 to 35 miles an hour. And we may see a pretty quick upscale growth into a cluster or squall line, which would increase the threat for flooding in addition to the potential for the aforementioned severe weather hazards with perhaps some more discrete activity farther south in the Concho Valley Edwards Plateau tonight. Uh, you can see storms by mid to late evening moving into Oklahoma, northwest Texas, the eastern big country, moving towards the hill country, but weakening pretty quickly as they outrun the instability, the atmosphere becomes less unstable, and they start to die down. So again, I don't think we're going to have a big old line of storms rolling on into the Metroplex, Waco, Austin, San Antonio tonight. But it's going to be close. We'll keep an eye out for it. But for folks in the Panhandle, West Texas, the Permian Basin, the Concho Valley, the Big Country, even the Edwards Plateau in Northwest Texas, yeah, it's going to be a busy afternoon and a busy night with thunderstorms capable of producing flooding, hail, very strong winds, perhaps a few tornadoes. We're going to have to watch some storms in northern Mexico, too, that may fire up over the higher terrain and move across the Rio Grande into the Edwards Plateau this afternoon. And we're also going to have to watch across northwest Texas, just in case we have an outflow boundary spark off some supercellular thunderstorms way east of the dry line and way east of this main round of storms, because those could have a localized severe weather threat. Yeah, I know, it's all sorts of fun. All right, so with all that being said, that's through tonight and Saturday morning. Let's talk about Saturday itself. Now, here's the severe weather outlook for Saturday afternoon into Saturday night. I'm going to be totally honest here and tell you there are a plethora of different solutions that could occur here. What we're not going to have is we're going to be rid of this upper level storm system that's coming through today. We're going to be back to a summer-like weather pattern with a minimal amount of upper level wind shear, which means we're not going to have a big sparking mechanism in the upper levels at least to fire up a bunch of thunderstorms. What we are going to have is tropical moisture and 
outflow boundaries galore from storms left over from today and tonight. So we've got a level one risk of severe storms for tomorrow across so what? The Guadalupe Mounds, Trans Pecos, Davis Mounds, the Big Bend, the Edwards Plateau, the Concho Valley, the Permian Basin, the Big Country, North Texas into portions of the Northern Brazos Valley, Western Texas Panhandle, West Texas, west of Interstate 27. There is a good chance this risk is going to be changed here in future updates. And depending on what ends up transpiring solution-wise, we may have a somewhat of a higher risk for severe weather again tomorrow than this graphic shows. At this point, given the weaker upper-level wind shear, we'd probably be back down to golf ball size hail, localized winds of 60 to 70 miles an hour, perhaps a tornado if we have any sort of supercellular thunderstorm latch onto an outflow boundary with enhanced low-level wind shear, with that outflow boundary being left over from storms today and tonight. It's not a synoptic event in terms of a big upper-level storm system coming in. This is going to be a mesoscale event tomorrow where we have to literally look at a satellite image, look at weather or surface weather observations, and pretty much uh, hand plot out where boundaries are located and go from there. Uh, Mid-afternoon would be the initiation time for storms in all likelihood. Although, we, if depending on what storms do tonight, we honestly may have storms continuing into Saturday morning like we did yesterday morning across portions of west central Texas. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out. We sc isolated to scattered storms possible across several regions of Texas tomorrow. I know y'all trying to make weekend plans. That's about as helpful as me telling you I need a wig. But one, I'm not getting a wig. Two, I'm sorry, but Mama Nature's a troll. And all the automated weather apps are going to be showing all sorts of different solutions. But there you go. I'm being blunt and honest. Uh, in terms of the forecast for Sunday... Now, here is the forecast rain totals for Sunday, 7 a.m. Sunday Central through 7 a.m. Monday. Obviously, we're going to have scattered to perhaps numerous showers and storms on Sunday. Honestly, the chance for storms looking higher than Saturday, at least in terms of precipitation, coverage, and chances. We could see chance of storms, Panhandle, West Texas, down into the Concho Valley Hill Country, South Texas, or South Central Texas, Central Texas, the Hill Country, North Texas, into portions of the Brazos Valley, Southeast Texas. And again, uh, this is not looking like a severe weather setup like what we're dealing with today, but more of a summertime pop-up thunderstorm event during the afternoon hours. Storms pop up, rain themselves out within an hour, but in the process of doing so, they send out those gusty outflow winds that end up sparking new storms nearby. And that process continues through about dinner time before it starts winding down. And then we're done with all the storms, generally speaking, a couple hours after sunset. So uh, while widespread organized severe weather in terms of, you know, tornadoes, damaging winds, and hail are not expected on Sunday at this point, any storm that pops up could produce dangerous cloud to ground lightning, localized very strong winds, known as microburst, heavy rainfall that could give your neighbor an inch of rain, but somehow give you nothing, because that's what Mother Nature likes to do to troll people. And that takes us through Sunday. And then we're going to be doing the same thing probably early next week with the possibility of some more pop-up thunderstorms. Now, the good news is, in terms of the temperature forecast, yes, it's warm, but we're about where we should be for this time of year. I mean, high temperatures in the upper 80s to middle 90s, low temperatures in the 60s to lower 70s. It's warm, but it's not hot compared to, say, uh, last summer or some of our hotter summers. And it doesn't look like we're going to be getting hot in terms of the next 7 to 10 days with the probability remaining that above average precipitation chances and at least seasonal temperatures, if not maybe a little cooler thanks to increased cloud cover, could continue into the second week of June. So we'll have chasers out and about today. Live severe weather coverage from yours truly is probable as we get into the afternoon hours. And of course, if you download the Free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app, you'll be able to keep an eye on the sky with your interactive weather radars, the neighborhood level forecasting, in addition to storm chasing videos and weather forecasts. So we'll be keeping an eye on things here. Y'all be doing the same if you live in western Texas. We're going to have plenty to deal with later today, flooding being the least of it. So we'll be here. Y'all have a great Friday. God bless.